Hi guys, this is Doc from Auto Tech Headquarters once again. Today's mini lesson is going to be on non-servo rear brakes. Also want you to take note of my special pointer, which is one of my chameleon type pointers. It'll change colors as I go along here. But let's start. The rear brakes are mounted onto this plate right back here, goes all the way around. This is called your backing plate and it is mounted onto the rear axle, right about where the rear axle comes out of the car. It's a stationary mount and it allows the brake shoes themselves to be mounted and the whole brake mechanisms to be mounted to it. One of the things that we've got here as far as parts and knowing what the parts are is we have got a wheel cylinder right here. We have got a brake shoe and this is the rear of the car over this side. So this would be your secondary brake shoe. On this side over here is called your primary brake shoe, which faces towards the front of the car. We have hold down springs, one to hold this brake shoe to the backing plate, one over here again to hold the brake shoe to the backing plate. We have got a return spring. This is the green spring that stretches across here. We have a self-adjusting mechanism, which is right here, or star adjusting mechanism. And then we have a self-adjusting lever that comes up here. And this is the self-adjusting lever return spring. Back behind the secondary shoe is called a, an emergency brake lever. It's this lever back here and your emergency brake cable would attach right to that lever. It would come out a hole behind here and go up towards your emergency brakes. And the bottom of the brake shoes are wedged in front of what's called the bottom anchor. Now let's take a look and go through how this brake setup works. You hit your brakes or apply your brake pedal. That creates pressure in the master cylinder. The master cylinder puts pressure down to this wheel cylinder. As pressure builds up in the wheel cylinder, brake fluid starts to push this end out and this end out. And these have got pistons. It's an open cylinder with pistons inside here. The pistons start to squeeze out or ease out under pressure. It moves the top part of your brake shoe out against the brake drum, and this will happen on both sides. Pressure builds up, pushes the top of the shoe out, and it moves, connects to the top of the brake shoe, creates pressure, and then the rest of the shoe itself starts to move out. When this does, the car slows down, and at that point in time, the more pressure you put, the more the car slows down until finally you come to a stop. Then you go ahead and you release the brake pedal. What this allows this green spring to do, called the return spring, is it will then pull these brake shoes in towards the center, pushing any brake fluid in the wheel cylinder back up into the master cylinder. So this green spring, heavy duty green spring, is called a return spring. Uh, another thing will happen sometimes is when you have too much clearance in your brakes, you have a self-adjusting mechanism that self-adjusts your brakes to the right amount so that you don't have a lot of clearance. It keeps the pedal nice and high. That's where this mechanism comes in here. It's called the star adjuster. You can't see it very well, but there's a uh, threaded adjuster here and this has a bunch of vertical or should I say horizontal notches that go across. When there's too much clearance between the brake shoes and the drums themselves in here, when you go backwards and you hit your brakes with a slight pumping action, that lets your shoes go out and they move out and expand against the drum and at the same time this little spring will go ahead and this lever moves up, catches on one of these notches, and the spring pulls it down, and it rotates this nut, and it lengthens this bar. This will continue to happen where this lever moves up, catches on a notch, spring pulls it down, and it lengthens the bar. 
to a point where eventually the clearance is the proper amount between the brake shoe and the drum and when this lever moves up in the air it cannot go up to the next horizontal notch and that's where it will stop self-adjusting. So that is how our self-adjusting mechanism works. Our emergency brake lever here basically is hinged to this top portion of the secondary shoe right here and when you pull on your emergency brake cable it pulls this lever outward this way towards the inside it expands this brake and it wedges against the drum and it holds the drum when you release the emergency brake the cable comes in it loosens this lever up this lever moves back to the position it is now the brake shoe moves away from the drum and you've released the emergency brake well ladies and gentlemen that was your mini lesson for today this is Doc at Auto Tech Headquarters. See you tomorrow.